Welcome everybody. What is clicking, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, it is time for the Wednesday night Bible study. And this is Pastor Sean. I do apologize. I was having technical difficulties uh, pertaining to my camera on my phone and I'm not able to get the webcam to work on my computer. So what we're going to be doing for this week is that I'm going to be doing it as a video file. So we're just going to treat this just like a regular uh, Bible study for today, for this week actually. And if you are new to my channel, what I do is from when I started actually about over a month ago was I'm going to be making videos every week, every Wednesday night, and then also releasing a video every Sunday morning for my YouTube channel, uh, which is Death Church Radio Podcast or the Sean C. Stuckey Show, which is my first name, middle initial, and last name. And I upload a video every Sunday there. And uh, what I did for last week's video being today is March 6th, so last Sunday, and I do actually apologize, I just wanted to, even though I already said all these things and recorded the first five minutes before I started the Bible study already, but I can't use the video, um, anyways, so just some technical difficulties there, but for uh, last week's video, what I did is I put out a commercial, about a five minute little commercial for the video that I'm going to be putting out this weekend. And for this upcoming Sunday's video, it's going to be a prayer video, and I haven't made one of these in quite some time. So for the, for the prayer video, it's uh, alleviating stress from your job. So this has to do with your job. You can play it at night on a low volume, and you can also play it while you're at work or out and about, or you can even play it when you're just hanging out at home doing things. And the purpose of this prayer video is going to be maybe six hours long. And for the purpose of this prayer video it's for your job and to alleviate stress and for you to handle stress and to pray against those working against you at your profession and that god's reign would reign over your life and over this job so if there's anything that's getting in the way of maybe a financial blessing or like whatever kind of blessing or that you're just having a hard time at work it kind of covers an array of topics um I'm actually not quite done finished writing the prayer yet, but it is going to be done by Sunday. It's a video you can pray, you can uh, play over and over again. So anyways, for today's video, what we're going to be doing is going over the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 to chapter 4 verse 22. And after this, we're going to be getting into the book of Leviticus, but it's probably going to take a couple more months or maybe a month to get through the rest of the book of Genesis. This is the New King James Bible. And if you are new to my channel and new to watching these videos for the Bible study that I teach, so for Pastor Sean's style here is that I read two pages, which is going to be in the thumbnail of this video, with a verse-by-verse -verse breakdown. So that's so first I'm going to read all the verses first, then read the breakdowns of all the verses. So that's what we're going to be doing for this week. Uh, you can take this time to press pause to go get your Bible if you like to follow along or pull up your Bible study app. To follow along to follow along with this so let's go ahead and go into prayer and then i'll start the bible study um dear heavenly father thank you for blessing me with this day today uh thank you for blessing me with the fact that i'm able to do this uh, bible study once again i do apologize and i haven't been doing it over the last two weeks um being that i have been overly stressed and uh, somewhat overwhelmed with my job, so it takes a lot of time and energy, but Lord, I know that you know that. Um, I'm just going to be praying from now on every time it's Wednesday night for me to be able to do this so I don't keep putting it on the back burner and then end up not doing it. So this is highly important, Heavenly Father, and i just like to pray that you would bless me and bless uh, anyone that is watching this or listening to this video. It is in your holy, precious name, Heavenly Father, your Son's name, Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this. So, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Verse 17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken 
from dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Uh, verse 21. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden. Cherubim is angels, just really quick. And the flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. Now, chapter 4, verse 1. Cain murders Abel. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel now. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry. And his countenance, countenance fell. Verse 6. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Verse 8. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall, now, it shall no longer yield its strength to you, a fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. Verse 15. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone find him should kill him. The family of Cain, verse 16. And we're going to go down to verse uh, 22. And then stop there. So then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelled in the land of Nod in the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begot Mech, um, Mech, Mehuel, Mezuzel, and Mezuzel begot Methushel, uh, and Methushel begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Adah. And the name of the second was Zaha or Zilha. And Adah bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwelled in tents and have livestock. Verse 21. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who played the harp and flute. And as for Zilla, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. And we will stop right there and then do the verse by verse breakdown. I'm actually going to be grabbing my coffee here. Okay. So we're going to stop right there for the book of Genesis all the way to chapter 4, verse 22. Okay. So now back to chapter 3, verse 17 to verse 19. Adam got his share of blame, even though he tried to escape it, in verse 12. Cursed is the ground. Though the curse was not directed at the man, it is trouble for the man. Now his life will be marked by toil, thorns, and thistles. Sweat 
and finally death. These words imply that before the fall, the ground was not filled with noxious weeds and work would have been more pleasant. Chapter 2, verse 15. To dust you shall return. Death will now come to humankind, whereas there had been the possibility of living forever. See Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 14. The word God was sure God had stated that they would certainly die. Chapter 2, verse 17. Now they were service noticed concerning the process of aging and decay that was already at work. See chapter 5, verse 5 and chapter 6, verse 3. Uh, verse 20. The name Eve is related to the herb meaning to live. Eve is our common mother, just as Adam is our common father. This is Adam's second name for her. The first was woman, the feminine complement to his own masculinity, which is found in chapter 2, verse 23. This is the first place the Bible mentions the killing of animals for human use, this time for tunics. Uh, verse 22, become like one of us. By means of their rebellious act, the man and woman not shared now shared something with God, but they were also at a minute enmity with him because of their sin. Adam and Eve's knowledge of good and evil had made them not wise but foolish. The fruit of the tree of life stopped aging. To eat of this tree was to live forever. One day this tree will be planted anew and its fruits will be for the healing of the nation. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 2. I don't remember reading that before. Um, okay, that's interesting. Uh, verse 23 of chapter 3. The man had been formed by God outside the garden. So chapter 2 verse 5 through 8 and verse 15. And had been given the task of tending and keeping it. Now he was removed from the garden and sent back to till the soil from which he was taken. See chapter 2 verse 5, chapter 3 verse 17 through 19, which is what we read. Uh, verse 24, even though Eve sinned first, this section of 22 to 24 focuses on the man, Adam. This is the first reverence to holy angels or the cherubim in the book of Genesis. The creation of the angels, including those who rebelled against God, see chapter 6, verse 1 through 4, so we'll get to that in a couple weeks, proceed to the creation activities described in chapters 1 and 2. A cherub, plural, cherubim, is an angel who takes on a particular form. See Exodus chapter 25, verses 18 through 22, and also Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 5 through 28. Cherubim, like all angels, are spirit beings, but they can take on physical bodies. Adam and Eve were barred from the garden that God planted of their enjoyment with a flaming sword. There was no way back in. The fact that the tree of life remained even though guarded by the angels and a sword was a ray of hope. Is, is it not possible that the very fact he guarded it but did not uproot it signifies that one day its fruits may be eaten again? So that it may be eaten again. Indeed, one day we will see it again. Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. Adam and Eve will no longer welcome in God's presence, but they had the hope that one day paradise would be regained. Okay, chapter 4, verse 1. The verb new is a splendid euphemism for sexual intercourse. Uh, one second. Okay, for sexual intercourse. It describes an intimate relationship that includes adore and pa or ardor and passion, but also mute mutality and openness, or I'm sorry, oneness. This was one, an act of procreation, but most likely not the first sexual union between Adam and Eve. Next part, the name Cain is related to a word meaning craftsman or metal worker, but it is also but it also sounds like the Hebrew word translation I have acquired. At times in Genesis, the meaning for a name is taken directly from it. For example, Ishmael in chapter 16, verse 11. At other times, the meaning is based on a pun, that word that sounds similar to the name itself. Verse 2. We have no explanation of the name Abel as we have with Cain. Verse 1. Perhaps after Abel was murdered. Verse 8. The parents looked back with sadness on the brevity of his life and called him Abel, meaning vapor, because his life was over so quickly. 
keeping sheep and tilling the ground were equally valid occupations. They reflected merely different interests of the two brothers, not their character. The story of Cain and Abel begins to begins a motif in Genesis of competing sons, like he say you and Jacob, which is in chapter 25, verse 26. Uh, verse 3, Genesis does not explain how the practice of sacrificial worship began. The first readers of the book understood it well because they had been instructed in full by God through Moses. See Leviticus. Um, some people assume that Cain's sacrifice of fruit was deficient because it did not involve the shedding of blood, which God required for forgiveness of sins. See Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. But nothing in this chapter 4 indicates but nothing in chapter 4 indicates that Cain and Abel came to God for forgiveness. Their sacrifices were acts of worship. In the later sacrificial system of Israel, God blessed the presentation of grain offerings alongside the sacrifices of animals. See Leviticus chapter 14 through 23. A farmer presented a portion of his produce just as a herdsman presented a sample of his flock. Cain's sacrifice was deficient because Cain did not do well, verse 7, not because the sacrifice was the fruit of the ground. Was the fruit of the ground. Sorry, stop there. Okay, so chapter 4, verse 4, breakdown. Abel's sacrifice was the best that he had to offer. The firstborn and their fat. Uh, there are no similar descriptive words for Cain's sacrifice. That is, Cain brought a token gift of his produce to the Lord and Abel brought the very best. God respected or looked with favor first upon the person then on his sacrifice, see also in Psalm 40, verse 6 through 8, Abel's offering was more excellent than Cain's because Abel's faith in the Lord. See Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Uh, verse 5. Something deficient in Cain's attitude was reflected in his offering. Instead of, instead of repenting of his wrongdoing, Cain became angry and we discovered filled with jealousy. Verse 8. Okay. Uh, verse 7, the gracious words of the Lord were that Cain could get it right. He did not have to go on being angry and um, morose. He could do well. Sin was lying at the door about to pounce on him like a lion. Verse 8, the murder was stunning in its lack of precedent, its suddenness, and its finality. Jesus spoke of this ghastly event as a historical fact. Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. Uh, verse 10, the blood of Abel cries out until the blood of one even more innocent that Abel is shed as well. See Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. In the manner of his death, Abel depicted the Savior Jesus. Verse 11, Cain was the third to be cursed of God. First was the serpent, chapter 3, verse 14, and the second was the ground, chapter 3, verse 17. Uh, verse 13, my punishment, usually rendered iniquity as in Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Here the term speaks of a result of iniquity. Next part, verse 14. Sadly, Cain expressed his distress only at the punishment he received, not at the crime he had done. Nor was there any note of repentance concerning his dreadful action. Anyone who finds me, next part, most have assumed that the others whom Cain feared were sisters and brothers already born, but not mentioned, or those yet to be born. This idea is based on the wording in chapter 5, verse 4, and he, Adam, had sons and daughters. Some have proposed that God created others outside the Garden of Eden, but the scriptures give no indication of this. It makes sense to conclude that Cain was afraid of his siblings. Okay, verse 16. The land of Nod is a wordplay of the term of vagabond. See verse 12 and 14. The point is more theological than geographical. To be part of the presence of the Lord is to be a vagabond in a vagabond land. Verse 17. Cain more likely acquired a wife from among his other siblings. Uh, verse 14. The name Enoch means dedicated one. Excuse me. The same name as a godly descendant of Seth who walked with God. See chapter 5 verse 21 and 24. The fact that Cain built a city named after his son speaks of a dramatic rapid increase in population. Uh, verse 18, in quick succession, six generations from Cain to Lamech are mentioned. The verse indicates a rapidly expanding population for the listing of each of these sons, including corresponding wives. 
next part 19 through 21 here the story of Lamech's most celebrated descendants is given Lamech represents skill and strength as well as arrogance and vengeance this Lamech is not the same as Lamech the son of Meth Methuselah chapter 5 verse 28 through 31 next part two wives this notable act suggests a, a deliberate attempt by Lamech to subvert the original pattern of God of one man and one woman. See chapter 2 verse 24. See also the words of Jesus in the subject, Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 through 6. Adah and Zillah, only rarely in these accounts are the names of the women mentioned. And last part here for verse 22. Some suggest that iron was not known during the time of Tubal Cain. And this verse means that latter metal workers who did work with iron could be look who could look back to the Tubal Cain as a father of metallurgy in general. Nama, even more rare than the names of the mothers in these accounts, verse 19, is the listing of the names of daughters and sisters. So thank you. Once again, that is going to be it for today's Bible study. So thank you for listening. What we're going to be reading or what i'll read you can read along with me next wednesday night is going to be genesis chapter 4 verse 23 to genesis chapter 6 verse 1 so thank you once again guys this is pastor sean and god bless